Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us again. This is the Wednesday Wellness with the Wichita Symphony. And today joining Daniel and I um, is Shannon Locke, psychiatrist. Today we are focusing on weighted blanket, kind of. Um, it's a thought that I had as I got a gift about nine months ago of a weighted blanket. And I loved the feeling of this. It kind of just was so heavy on me. I could sleep better. It felt like a dozen cats laying on me, very comforting. And as we were putting this program together, the Wednesday Wellness, we were trying to think, what is the weighted blanket version of music? And so Daniel and I have been talking a lot about what is the perfect weighted blanket piece? And so we'll get to that in a minute, but I would like to ask Shannon Locke, Dr. Shannon Locke, to talk a little bit about what the benefits are and if a weighted blanket's not your thing, what else could work? So welcome, Shannon. Thank you. Thank you for having me and for including me in all of these things. This is awesome. Um, so weighted blankets, they're, they've been used in a lot of different settings within healthcare. I mean, as it's a tool. It's something that can help. It doesn't replace medication or doesn't replace any recommendations by your doctor, but it's something that can make people feel better. Um, think about anyone who's had kids and ever had to swaddle their child. That feeling of security, of feeling safe, protected, that's kind of the theory behind, like one of the theories behind the weighted blankets. It has this deep pressure therapy, I think is where it ends up coming from. Um, but yeah, it can help reduce anxiety. It can help with insomnia. These are things that we've used with people with intellectual disability, with autism, people who have sensory like issues in terms of um, just needing to have a little bit more like feeling of control or like that feeling like they're being hugged for yeah. lack of a better way of putting it. Um, it really does help out with anxiety a lot. I've seen that with a lot of people. Um, there is kind of just that word of caution as with everything in medicine, you have to be kind of careful about things and there are different weights to weighted blankets. And I would definitely talk with your healthcare provider if you do decide to get one so that you don't get the incorrect one because having too much weight, <laughs> too much of a good thing, uh, can actually have the opposite effect. I mean, it can make you feel like held down or stuff like that. So you just wanna be careful. Um, I said, always talk with your healthcare provider before you get anything like this. Um, other things that you can use, again, this is like a way to be able to cope with new feelings, with the anxiety, with stress. Everybody's got a lot of new things that are coming out right about now with the whole pandemic. So. People are experiencing new feelings that they've never experienced before and are not really sure how to deal with it. So we find coping skills and the two people here, they've got the most amazing coping skill in the world is being able to play music and to be able to share that with people and show their love for this. And that's one thing I've had is working with you guys on this is you can see your face just light up when you're talking about these pieces and these, like even just a small piece of a song is like you can just see how much this really helps you and it will help others as well. But coping skills can be as simple as drawing, um, coloring in a coloring book, reading a book, going for a walk, breathing deeply. There's even some where putting your hands under cold water or holding an ice cube mm -hmm. can sometimes, again, it's that having a sensory feeling or something that's different. So when it comes to the weighted blanket, there are studies on this, which uh, I'll give to you guys to post on the site as well, just so that people know that there is a science behind this, um, but also includes some things about other types of coping skills that can be used if you're experiencing these things. If you are experiencing anything that you aren't really sure how to deal with, please call for help from your either healthcare provider, uh, there's local lines as well. We'll have some of those posted. But the main thing is, this, this is not necessarily a full therapy. This is something that you can use to help. But so this is kind of like an auxiliary and yes, just an extra. Exactly. And that's kind of the way I, I see my... The whole, like, uh, I have to do the provisos on all of yeah. that. I... <laughs> <laughs> to me, the my weighted blanket is something I just throw on. You know, it's snowing here in Chicago. I'll just sit with it in front of the TV. And if the cat 
tends to join me even better, more weight. So it's so good. Um, so thank you for such a, an extensive um, uh, viewpoint about the weighted blanket. And I know that music doesn't hold you down or caress you the same way. It caresses you more spiritually. And so I asked Daniel, and I did this myself, kind of a challenge. Can we come up with only a few weighted blanket analogies? Because between the two of us, I mean, we've been playing and conducting for years. Each of us has like a catalog of our favorites. So whittling it down. So we'll share our, our brief list in the um, link, but we've picked two each, two of our choices each. And I'd like to ask Daniel first to talk about his weighted blanket pieces. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Holly. Uh, it's great to be part of this and Shannon, it was wonderful to hear your explanation about the weighted blanket. Um, it was difficult for me to really bring it down to two pieces because just like you said, Holly, we've experienced so much music over the many years we've been working. It's, it's difficult. I mean, I could make a list probably a hundred pieces long and in different ways, uh, they give me comfort. Um, and just because I chose these two uh, doesn't mean that they're always the best because as we know, as human beings, we, we feel different ways on different days. And sometimes we need this type of weighted blanket or that type of weighted blanket. But I've decided to choose one. Uh, one of the works is by Johann Sebastian Bach. And he's one of my favorite composers and maybe is the one responsible for me to go into to music. And the piece, that he wrote that uh, has given me a strong gravitational pull to go back to over and over is the Goldberg Variations. This is a work for keyboard. At his time, the, the modern day piano was not invented yet, but it is played on piano and people can hear recordings by multiple artists of this piece, the Goldberg Variations. It's about 30 minutes long total, but there are 30 variations in it and they're only about a minute or two long. And uh, the way, the piece begins drew me in even as a nine-year-old and made me feel comfortable and safe because I was able to experience a wide range of emotions while being kind of held in this space that was very safe. So I was able to experience sadness, but I wasn't sad. Uh, so it was like a, a safe place. And that's the best way I can explain that. The variations vary so widely. Uh, you can hear something in minor that's very kind of introverted, but then something that just explodes out and is just so happy in the very next variation. So you get this wonderful variety uh, in that piece. So anyway, that's one that gives me great comfort. And part of that is because of the nostalgia. Uh, the second piece is by Beethoven, another great composer who drew me into music and uh, has kept me there. And this is the, uh, from his fifth piano concerto. Beethoven wrote five piano concertos. And this is the last one of his. It's called the, it's subtitled the Emperor Concerto. And the slow movement of that is the adagio, which it means it's, it's a very slow movement. But with Beethoven, we can experience all the full range, the full gamut of emotions, uh, wild joy, deep seriousness. But this one, I feel, is perhaps his most tender. And so when I think of the most tender kind of embrace of just kind of being there and just being lulled, I think of this piece, it's, it's not a complex work. Beethoven was capable of writing extremely complex pieces. This one, uh, its complexity is in its simplicity, maybe able to express so much depth with, with, with seemingly simple tools, but that's the work of a genius, I think anytime. Um, but the, the music is so tender. And, and that's every time I hear it or I study it, I'm just in this other place where I feel like everything is going to be okay. It just makes me feel like things are going to be okay. And I think that is one of the feeling, the comfort feelings I get that would be perhaps akin to having a, a weighted blanket. So those are my two pieces, but there are many more and I'll, I'll have a list for people to, to reference on their own. I love your choices. And I, what you said about the Goldberg variation made me think of, it's it's a weighted blanket, but it's a weighted quilt. It's like a mm -hmm. quilt work of like a short movement here, or a longer movement here, or a movement that brings a little sadness, a joyous movement. How fun. Yeah. That's that. I'm gonna listen to it differently now. <laughs> I love your description of it. Like I'm now like really excited to hear that because I want 
to see what that feels like. I mean, anyone who's experienced anxiety, I'm going to kind of go to the medical side on this one is like, they feel that racing heart rate. They feel the racing thought, like the racing thoughts, the cold sweat, the feeling like your heart's going to come out of your chest. Mm. And their music has that effect on people where it can actually induce like your heart rate to go up. Like you get excited with stuff or it can just lull you and make you feel like you said, safe, held in a safe environment so that you can experience all those other things. But you also know, yeah, I'm okay here. We're good. (laughs) So, yeah, I mean, I, I love that. That's one thing about music that I love is that you can experience all of those things and yeah, you don't have anything on you, but it affects how your body reacts as well. Yeah. I'm going to take Daniel's word of nostalgia on my first offering and the offering that I, I like is the Brahms first symphony, the third movement. And it takes me right to a point of being 16 and walking around Washington DC with my grandparents. And I know that sort of seems like, how does that fit in? While I was listening to this piece over and over and over on my little Walkman as I was studying it for youth orchestra. And so it became kind of a soundtrack for that point in my life, visiting my grandparents, walking around Washington DC with this piece. And the piece is the perfect, happy kind of contemplative, Piece. It just makes me feel safe. It's a safe point um, in my life. It takes me right back to that point. It just instantly. And to me, it's my weighted blanket because of that feeling that I can conjure up immediately, that I can remember that nostalgia. And my second piece, I, it's not nostalgic at all. Um, it's new to me. It's not a new piece by any means, but it's new to me. It's the Sibelius Suite for Violin and Strings. And I described this as like the opening first movement of this really is that weighted blanket where it just makes you feel so good and so secure and just so happy. It sounds like if the Sibelius Violin Concerto had a kitten. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's just like, oh my gosh, this is like so cute and just beautiful and happy and just whatever that feeling is. I like that feeling. And as soon as I hear that first that first, the opening bars of that, it takes me out of whatever funk I'm in and puts me right into that mood of, this is awesome. This music is so yummy. I know that's not a really great word for music, but I'm going to use it anyway. Um, And like Daniel, he's got a list. I've got a long list. It's really hard whittling it down. And as we discover pieces, um, like for instance, a couple, actually it was last year, Daniel programmed um, the George Walker. George Walker, yeah. George Walker um, lyric for strings. I hadn't heard it before. It was like such a gift. Suddenly, uh, this is on my playlist. And it's anytime somebody offers you a piece, you've got to try this. It's the same thing as somebody giving me this weighted blanket. Here, you've got to try this. This is a gift. So we're giving you a list of our gifts that we say, hey, you've got to try this. And we hope that you pass these gifts on. So if you know somebody that like, maybe they're in a funk or maybe they're needing some extra, you know, happy feelings or whatever, shoot them a link, what you think they might like. So yeah. I love idea. that idea. I love that idea, Holly, so much because as we were talking before, so many times people have suggested something to me and I, I thank them for it. But I didn't think of thanking them as though they gave me a gift, but but that's what it is. And right. It's- and it's something you can re-gift and mm-hmm. re-gift and re-gift. And it every time I, I, I hear a certain piece that I somebody has says, You've got to you've got to listen to this, I think of them so fondly. And I, I think just passing that on is one thing we can do that will make us feel good. Giving, I think, is is a nice thing. Yeah. It's giving a little bit of yourself, a little bit of your memories, a little bit of how like your feelings from that will translate into what the offering is. And I mean, it costs you nothing and you're giving something, a little piece of yourself, a little piece of your inner calm to somebody else that could really end up using it. And it's something that it's very easy for somebody to say, Hey, I just listened to this the other day. It really made me feel like this. Maybe this might help you out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the one thing, the nostalgia, and this is 
last thing I'll get into the whole brain thing, but I mean, all of our senses, our five like major core senses, they all go directly into the brain and they go into, and they go into this one loop that helps with memory. So that's why when you're listening to the radio and a song comes on that, like you instantly can get transported right back to that one moment in time where you remember listening to it is it's literally the sound goes right into your brain, right into that and immediately brings it up. Like you wouldn't have been thinking about it, but it's instantly there. And music has that effect on so many people. It's not on everybody, but the people who really it connects with, I mean, it can bring a lot of really amazing memories back or at least make you kind of have that same feeling of comfort from that. It's extremely powerful. Yes. And it's something that I don't know about you, Daniel, but I've taken for granted for a good portion of my life. I think I have too. I, I, I've recognized what you're talking about, Shannon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I had heard that also that the somehow the, the way music, the way music is um, different than when we're reading something is that uh, we don't have to really process it mentally. Like it's, it can be an intellectual exercise but we don't have to figure it out. Anytime we use our eyesight, you know, we're like, what kind of shape is that? How far is it away from me? You know, we're always calculating with our, with our ears when we listen to music. I think it's just like, it just goes like, it's almost like there's a straight line to the, the heart and we just, you just can feel something right away. It's mm -hmm. a spectacular kind of thing. Yeah. Well, oh, but, sorry, go ahead, Shannon. I, I was just gonna say, I mean, in terms of everybody processes information differently and, I mean, with music, I hear it come in. I, I don't know notes. I, I couldn't like see what's be like what I'm listening to on a page. But like when I read, I see the story as a movie, like in my mind. But I've heard that that's not always the same thing with everybody. So everybody processes music differently. And the way that I've heard you guys describe music and how I've heard other musicians describe it, they can almost see the notes in their head they can almost see how the whole piece goes together, but not everybody hears that. So hearing your guys' description really helps to tie this in and it gives context to what we're listening to. And I think that's also really important. It's kind of almost like a translator. Like you guys have been really great with that. And they oh, okay, this is, this is kind of how I see this. And it's like, oh, okay, now I kind of get it. I mean, there's different languages in all of these things and your guys' help has been invaluable, at least to me. So thank you. Well, this has been invaluable talking to you and kind of like getting the whole concept of weighted blanket and what that does to somebody and then just inviting people to take that metaphorically and use it with music and then to give it to somebody else. So go ahead and check. They're probably going to be below this video. There's going to be our two each links and then our list. So if you find something on the list that looks interesting, find it on YouTube. I think it'll be a really good um, exploration. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you. <laughs>